That's a great one. I hope you get that face on camera for sure. I'm going to live to watch that one back. Can't wait to see what it stops uh, I can't even see I'm seeing my regular faces on camera. Hi, you guys. It's Thursday night. <laughs> you guys are live here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy, and I'm a Dixieville Paint brand ambassador. And every Thursday evening, we come here and paint with you guys live at 9 p.m. Eastern. Well, you do. Uh, I feel like you kind of do. From yeah. afar. Yeah, from yeah. afar. Um, you're the studio audience. <laughs> so, uh, you, you guys might have... the cue cards? My husband, Sean, is here. Oh, wait. We're supposed to laugh yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my husband, Sean, is here to answer any questions you guys have. So, pop on and ask any questions as you go. Tonight, you guys may have heard a little bit of a rumor that Dixie Bell is coming out with a new line of transfers. Um... So this is particularly exciting for me because um, they really involved the brand ambassador team in the process and we got to have a say in some of the designs and um, I got to test all the samples from the manufacturers and I chose this one because I feel like the ease of use is phenomenal above and beyond anything that I've used. So I, I feel like these have a stamp on them that are something that I can really be proud of. Um, and so I'm going to work with one tonight. And the one I'm going to work with tonight is the Magnolia Transfer. So this is my this is my inspiration here. That's our Magnolia Transfer. I'm going to turn this side so you can see all the sheets that are in there. And then I'll show them to you what they look like outside of the tube too. So I really like this because I wanted white flowers. I wanted white flowers for a while because white flowers are universal. You can put them on any background. Um, and... So this gave us white flowers and then they're a really pretty watercolor style too. So I feel like it's a really pretty style. So this is one sheet that's in the package. Um, and I'll talk to you what I'm going to do uh, with these in a second. This is another sheet that's in there. And I like these are buildable designs, which I'm a huge fan of because then I feel like the designs don't get stale because you can arrange them any which way to suit your furniture piece. And then you start seeing all the different designs that can come out of one transfer. Um, you know, based on what people create with the buildable design. So these you can stack, you can, you know, build branches out depending on the shape that you're working on, the size of your piece, and um, kind of structure it that way. The piece that I'm going to work on with is actually this one sheet here, which is a solid sheet design, okay? And this is kind of cool because what I want to show you guys is I want to show you guys how I'm going to paint around this transfer to make a seamless edge that blends into my furniture piece. Your transfer doesn't always have to be the same exact size as the door or the drawer that you're putting it on because with paint, I'm going to camouflage this and make it look like a seamless part of my piece. So what I'm working on here, um, tonight is going to be this little side table here. Um, let me tell you how I've prepared this. I've cleaned it really well. I sanded. There were some uneven spots, so I sanded a little bit. And then I've got a coat of Dixie Belle uh, Gray Boss on here. So the color that you see is boss in gray okay and that's because if i'm going to put this transfer on the front of my piece um i eventually want to get it to kind of close to the background color so when i'm choosing a color of boss i choose the color of boss that's closest to the end result that i want to get to in this case it's this kind of beigey color there's a little bit of grays in here that's where i want to get to so gray boss was an easy choice for me um, um so that's what I've gone on my piece so far. Um, we have an audience member that wants to say something. One? Just one? Yeah. That one of, guy? That's a lot of sheet. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot of sheets. A lot of sheets. Four sheets in this too. Okay, and then um, what I'm going to do is this, I actually have a matching one here. It's The legs were cut off at some point, so I am going to put some little feet on it so it'll be the same height. They're missing their tops because they had stone tops that are not... We're not very well attached and I think I'm actually going to pour those in resin and make them look like a really pretty maybe marbleized look. Uh, well, I mean, this is all future plans. I'm just digging into these now, but this is what I plan to do. But that's why they're missing their tops. Um, but let's talk about pulling out colors. So I like to work, when I'm working with a transfer, um, I will use this as my, ins my color inspiration. So I look at this for what colors can I pull out of here that I would want to use in the line. That's where having uh, the fan deck comes in handy. So if you don't have all 69 of the Dixie Belle colors plus the metallics and patinas and all that, you can pull out your fan deck and start, they're, they're, these are true to color, and I can hold these up to the background 
and see, okay, what colors do I have in this transfer? So this is dried sage. That's a pretty good match to my background. And I have dried sage out. Um, I can hold it up and this is, this is sawmill gravy. That's a, probably a little bit light for my background. I can see a little bit of that maybe Sorry, in the yes. flowers. So this is kind of what I would do if I if I know I want to use a transfer and I and I'm trying to find what colors would coordinate with that. I would take my um, fan deck. These are available on the Dixieville website, which is really nice because before we had wooden spoons. Sorry, I'm looking for a particular color. Um, we had wooden spoons and the retailers had them, but if you wanted samples at home, you either had to make something yourself. So it's nice that you can have the color samples at home yourself. Quick I got, question for you. Yeah. Transfer. Yeah. If you put that transfer over a dark background, yeah, will it hold its color? Um, this one's pretty opaque. Opaque meaning that it's it's not translucent, so you can kind of hold it up to the light and see. Uh, you're gonna get an undertone from a dark color, so I would say you probably want to put this over something in the medium to light range. Otherwise, it's just gonna cast a darker tone under this, which is okay. That may be what you want. But just consider that you're going to get a little undertone, a little bit of an undertone through your transfer. It's not completely opaque. It's what semi-opaque. I mean, if I put something behind this, you can kind of still see. Here's my paint lid. See how it darkens the look of the transfer? Now, as far as the flower. Oh, let's. I mean, it's the same. It's going to be the same thing. Same thing as the background. I don't want this to stick to itself. It's not totally opaque, it's semi-opaque. So I'm still gonna see something darker that's put behind this. It, it has a little bit of translucency, just it's gonna cast an undertone, a shadow under there. Okay, so let me get back to picking my colors, okay? So what I'm looking at, I feel like Spanish moss is a little bit dark. This is Spanish moss. I could still pull this out and I did bring it out because I might use it for a little bit of shading. And then colored greens was another choice that I saw in here. And I see that in the dark leaves of the flowers. So I think I'm going to use that for a little bit of my shading. And then another one was, um, eventually I'll learn the order that these things are in. Uh. French linen, that's pretty close. I should have got French linen out. I do like French linen on there. Maybe I'll grab that. And Are you then, gonna make me grab it? Um, no, because then I have to tell you guys where on the shelf it is. It's just easier for me to get it myself. Sorry, I'm taking you out of the pit you know, just to show the. Okay, so let's get to painting. Driftwood. Driftwood is the one I'm looking for. I see a little bit of gray in here, but I could I could solve that with French linen. Let me grab my French linen. Now that I see oh. that, that's kind of what I'm kind of kind of where my mind is going. I'm gonna use multiple colors though. Okay, hang on. Not far away, guys. Just. Just around the block at the neighbor's Just, yeah. house. You want the keys to the car? <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> you guys hang out. Um, my paint shelf is organized by the color card, the Dixie Bell color card. So if you don't know the color card, you would look at the shelf and be like, why is Sorry, Brittany. pink next to blue? So I think that fan deck is a huge help when you're pulling colors out of something like a transfer. So if you look at the size of this transfer, I'm gonna have space up here above it, and I'm gonna have space down here below it, and I wanna paint this in so it looks like it's a seamless design around the whole front of this door, okay? And then my other nightstand for this little set is going to have a loose flower design on it. So imagine that's this one, and I'm gonna take and I'll place the flowers on. So they're not gonna be an exact match, but they'll be complementary. I think it's gonna be really cute. Okay, so that's the direction that we're going. So here's the deal, you guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow, all day tomorrow, right here on the Dixie Bell paint page, um, all of the brand ambassadors are going live all day long tomorrow. All day. All day you get a day of all the brand ambassadors. We're going to use the transfers all day tomorrow, okay? So I'm going to work on this piece with you guys tomorrow. You'll actually get to see me paint in the transfer. But let's get a base on for our transfer. Now for my own intent and purpose, does that mean you're going to be tied up to where I can actually just do whatever the heck I want tomorrow? Oh, wait, you think I'm going to be on there? I'm going to be on there all day long? Okay, that sounds like the worst day ever. <laughs> well! so, yeah, for the audience and for me. Uh, no, it means you get maybe half an hour to 40 minutes. Oh, well, yeah, I got to make some calls. Of peace and quiet. Okay. So, I don't know. Use it wisely. That's all I'm saying. 
So I think, um, you guys, this nightstand, I take cues from my, oh, oh. What? Oh, you I'm take sorry. cues? I, I take cues from my, from my piece when I'm choosing my finishes. This is rough and rustic, okay? Some, some pieces are just not meant to be pretty and refined and cute and beautiful. Um, so I'm going with it. We are going rough and rustic on this. I'm going to put some texture in my paint finish. Um, I want to use multiple You're crazy. colors. I know. I know. That's what I do. I'm going to use multiple colors, and I think I'm going to do a little bit of a, um, I don't know, kind of a cross hatching because I see a little bit of a texture in the background of this. Okay. So really? I'm going to start with, I think, French linen drop cloth and dried, or French linen driftwood and dried sage. Oh, that one needs a stir. That's a shake. Okay, I have all the transfers here. Have you guys seen them all? Have you guys seen all the designs? I posted them all on my page if you have not. I have them all here. So I'm gonna dip into a little bit of my French linen. I'm just gonna use my Dixie Belle Mini, which by the way, can I tell you that I did a deep clean on my brushes? And got all that paint out that's down here it was a labor of love but man it's killing me to put paint on them right now kitty it's the only way to go right watch it live with an earbud in your ear while you're working oh yeah or at work. <laughs> huh? oh you're at yeah. <laughs> i always feel bad for like like i owe some some company some serious productivity you know like does your boss know <laughs> I don't know, but then I remember like when I used to work for the state, I'm using French linen right now. I'm just kind of dusting it on. I'm not putting on full coverage and I'm just going to kind of give my, I, want, I have a little bit of even my boss peeking through is kind of a cool layer. I don't really like when my boss is peeking through. <laughs> yeah, that is not I a can't cool, get anything done. That is not a cool layer. That is actually a <laughs> That's creepy, called micromanaging. That is, that is a creepy layer. <laughs> <laughs> looking through the outside window, pulling a Sheila, looking in from the outside. <laughs> well, mostly because you work from home, so yeah, yeah. Uh, then it's extra weird. You know, if you're at the office and they're looking over your cubicle, it's a little more acceptable at least. So, um, if you had a solid transfer, could you put it directly over the boss? Oh yeah. You know what? I actually saw a question the other day. Someone said. Uh, I really like the color of my boss. Can I just clear coat it and leave that as my color? There's no reason you can't. It's um, it gets full coverage. It Why do you put all this stuff in my way? Sorry. It's gonna protect your piece. Um, I mean, there's no reason you can't. They just really put the boss on and said, "I like this color. It's kind of the color of manatee gray." I would say is what the color of this boss is. Just going back a little bit in time. Uh... Good evening, FBJ. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, and that's chiming in from the UK. It's 2.20 in the morning. Hi, everyone. What else oh would you gosh. rather do? Yeah, the, those are my people, though, the ones that are still up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so I'm just kind of, um, that's a little bit of my French linen. I'm gonna, With my same brush, I'm going to dip into a little bit of my driftwood, which is more of a gray. Dip one in. And I'm going to kind of let them, so I feel like, I don't know, I want to show you guys this. Maybe you can hold it up for me. What? I want to show like the kind of texture that it's, it's like a concrete texture. Maybe like a parchment paper is what it's supposed to look like. I come here to not work. Well, but, but then you can kind of see that, I, that I don't want a solid finish on the back, back background. On what there. are you trying to do? Oh my gosh. Have you been paying attention at no. all? Do you not see what <laughs> goes on over here? Where have you been? Oh my gosh. You know, do you know what we're doing? Huh? <laughs> Where am I? Who are you? <laughs> No, I just wanted to show, kind of show that background so you can kind of see the colors that are in there and that it's got a little bit of a texture. It's not. Oh, a, I'm no hand model. It's not a solid color, you guys. That's why I'm, that's why I'm not just painting on a solid color. Um, can I tell you guys something about this hardware too? I usually do not paint with my hardware on. Yeah, I come on my own. You're having problems, aren't you? I totally am. <laughs> do you need some help? Are you a therapist? <laughs> okay, wrong kind of help. Okay, and let's see what a little bit of dried sage does. Dried sage is kind of in the same family, but it's a little warmer. It's actually really pretty with these colors. So it's going to be a very subtle kind of a texture that I start building up with each one of these little brush strokes right on top of each other. I'm just using one brush, giving myself a little bit of variation, and it starts building up. It's, it, it starts building up. It takes, you know, a little bit of going over. Um, I'm painting with my hardware in for a few reasons. 
Um, I can't get it off. I could, but I started feeling like if I keep going at this, I'm going to damage my hardware and it's really pretty. So I'm just going to, um, you know, if I lightly get paint on it, I lightly get paint on it and I can either come back and clean it if I want it cleaned afterwards. Um, or I may just leave it with a little bit of paint on it and, and, um, put a little, a little bit of gilding wax on there, but I don't usually paint with my hardware in. So that may be kind of a, kind of a new thing. It's actually a peeve. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of it kind of is a pet peeve. Are we come here for for truth? Yeah, I know. Don't lie I, to I, us. I, I lay I lay it out straight for you guys. I don't like painted hardware. You know, it's one of those things, it's like a like Photoshop. I don't like photoshopped photos. Like what? I know, I, I like am I I'm just gonna give it to all straight to you guys. Now I'm just gonna go home crying. So I'm, I'm feathering in a little bit of the driftwood over top and that's, I just want more texture. So I'm not going at it very hard. I'm just kind of, now this part's going to barely show behind. And my intent is I'm going to put the transfer over and I'm going to paint over my transfer once it's on there. So then I can really blend it in. This is just giving me kind of a background. It's kind of giving me an idea where I'm going but this is still just a base coat and when i put the transfer on tomorrow we will get to see actually painting it in and camouflaging the edge of that transfer so courtney made a request she wants me to follow you with with your brush so that we see what you're dipping in uh -oh. so i don't want to be responsible here's where we get into safety measures any kind of whiplash <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Vision problems. Well, just tip it, tip it. Can you, can you tip the camera down? A I will little bit? when you. I'm just, I'm going back and forth. Honestly, I'm dipping into, I have three colors open right now, which are French linen, driftwood, and dried sage are the three that I have open. I plan to incorporate some collard greens, but I'm going to wait till my transfer is actually on here and I'm going to shade with it more than anything. So I'm um, not using that one right now. Do you have a designated time you're going to be on tomorrow? Um, yes, my time is, I have a, a graphic that's going to go up that will tell you all the times for the entire team, but my time, same exact time I'm on right now, but tomorrow. So hey, 9, wait a minute. 9 p.m. Eastern. This is about when you just stop talking. What, 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 what's going on in there? What's Me? going on in there? Oh, what's going on? Huh? What you got in there? <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel, like, I feel like we just interrupted someone. Are you still talking? Yeah, apparently there, there's wow. a, a get together. Is this going a carpool? On. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, uh, did Bob Ross have a baby? Is this carpool karaoke? <laughs> Should I ask where baby Bob Ross has come from? <laughs> wow. Man, um, they're born with better hair than I have. <laughs> my son found this. Look, it's a little Bob Ross easel. So it's an easel, right? Okay. So that's a OG Bob Ross, original. Mm -hmm. And then he has baby Bob Ross. So oh, what? Wait, listen. Huh? <laughs> That's awkward. It's... Let's get crazy. Um, huh. I don't know. Tell that I, to the guy I that's parachute like, didn't open. I feel like he sounds like a stalker. Yeah. I feel like that's something I would report to the police if I got a phone call like that. Failure is a learning experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's empty that out because I want to tip this back. Unless you're skydiving. Let's come out to the side here. I'm gonna wrap I'm gonna let those dry on the front a little bit and I'm gonna wrap this onto the side. So I'm gonna start with my French linen again. Just I'm just using one brush because I want these to kind of I'm going to actually uh, ride some of this texture in my piece too. So when I put my boss on this, I didn't work to get it overly smooth. It's got some, you know, cracks in here and stuff. This is going to be a piece that has dark wax on it and it's got distressing and it's not going to be your clean and refined. And I take cues for my pieces when I make choices like that. And if, if it's a piece that's got that stuff going on with it, you know, not every one of them has to be cleaned up. I saw um, I saw a post the other day in in uh, the Dixieville Paint Group, the Chalk Mineral Enthusiast Group on Facebook, and she had a uh, instead of blocking her bleed through, she used it like to discolor her paint in spots and let her piece let um, the piece bleed, 
And this color of the paint, almost like what a dark wax would do, only you don't get to choose where it's gonna happen because the bleed through determines it. But I was like, you know what? Go with your piece, listen to this, the signs that it's throwing out at you because that's gonna tell you a lot about what finishes will work if you're not trying to fight the whole time with what's already there. So this is French linen. I went top to bottom, got a little bit of cross hatching there. I'm gonna come with my driftwood now. Just a couple of quick things. One, Amy says hi. Hi, Amy. And then two, just oh. an observation. Yes. While you do that, I wonder if Ralph Macho would make a good furniture painter. Oh, the up and down there. I bet you huh? he's got. I bet you he's got. The Paint arm. the fence. Yeah, he's got the arm. Although I don't know, my kids watch Cobra Kai and Ralph Macho is not what he used to be. He's just not. He's not there. He, Thanks for that. He apparently owns a car dealership now. So. Okay, so this is my driftwood, which is it's a little bit cooler than the French linen. Uh, it's a very slight contrast, but a really pretty contrast. I can still see the French linen peeking through. I can still see my gray boss peeking through. I'm just going to build this texture up, and it's going to take a while. It's going to be slow, but it's not a difficult technique by any means. It's just repetition. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Diana thinks that Johnny's hot. Is that the other guy? <laughs> No, I, I got I, nothing. I didn't watch it. You probably Oh, don't it lie. Binging it. All right. Me and yeah. Cobra Kai. No, I have a, I have a 13-year-old son. My 13-year-old watched Cobra Kai while I rolled my eyes and was like, oh, get this off. Is there anything else on? Man, do we pay for these cable channels? So <laughs> Teenage soap operas. Cobra Kai. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, you said Amy's on. Amy is on just before me tomorrow. Amy is on before me tomorrow. So if you guys tune in, she's on at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, and I'll be on at 9 p.m. Eastern right after her, both working with the transfers. Um, each of us is going to kind of feature two different transfers in our um, in our live, and it's the day is carved out just for brand ambassadors. What fun is that? So I have um, I have a graphic I'll put up on my page after I get off here that this is um this is my dried sage. You can kind of see this is a little bit warmer. I just put that driftwood on. Okay, so this is something that I like to do when I'm using multiple colors. I will alternate and I look for contrast. So let's say I'm using two colors that are really close. Like what are these here? This is burlap and sandbar. If I was going to use those, I would put something in between them. You know, just as a hypothetical, I would put this in between them so then it gives contrast. Each layer is light, dark, light, okay? Or vice versa, dark, dark light, dark. Um, but I, I try to, so here, the dried sage has contrast with that driftwood that I put underneath it. Whereas if I layer two close colors on top of each other, you wouldn't see that as much. Even though this is a really subtle contrasting look, you can still see the difference in the colors. I can see them more so in person than you guys probably can on camera. Well, Irene's from Bonnie, Scotland. Oh. Um, okay, so after I get off here today, I will post a, I, I meant to post it earlier. I'm exhausted. It's been one of those days where you work all day and feel like you did nothing. That's where I am right now. So after I get off here tonight, I will post a graphic on my page at Brushed by Brandy that will show you guys all the time. So if there's a particular brand ambassador that you wanted to catch, it will tell you what time they're on. But my recommendation is you just want to watch all day. I call in sick to work. I'm going to throw that at my manager. See what, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see how yeah. you feel call about that. Call in sick to work. Unless your manager is watching, this is, this is my French linen. Go back with some of that. And I'm, I've got pretty good coverage now. So like if I were to hold up my transfer, I feel like I'm getting close to building up to where this could be my background. So it might have a little more of the gray in there, which is kind of interesting. I'm just feeling like there's a little more gray. Now, when I actually paint this in tomorrow onto the front of my piece, is when I will really perfect it. I even see some little black flecks in here and I could fleck a little bit of black paint around my piece. So I'm really gonna get into camouflaging this tomorrow, but I wanna kind of lay a base and this is also helping me figure out 
what's going to be kind of close. So since I'm seeing that little bit more gray, I'm going to make sure that I'm a little heavy on my driftwood. You could do a solid background. It would be still very pretty on a solid background. I just want a little bit of texture. And since I'm going rough and rustic with this piece, it's got texture in it anyways. In fact, when I'm doing brush strokes, like, uh, can you see this spot pretty good? If I go, if I just lightly run my brush across this, it's picking up all the texture that's in the wood underneath. So you can kind of see it starts getting spotty and kind of bumpy because I'm just lightly running the brush over and letting it pick up that texture. So I don't even need to create the texture. I just need to find it and let it come out. So even though this will have texture and then each brush stroke I put tech, I put on the piece is creating its own texture. So as they dry and I come back and lightly dust over the top, I'm going to get the brush strokes underneath it too. All right. So I feel like that's a pretty good base. So when I put it down, you can kind of see it's a little uneven and then I'll shade in a little bit with my paint. I'm going to let this dry and I think we'll be able to turn it and probably do that a little bit tonight too. Just gonna get this lip up here. I'm just painting that a solid color because when I put my stone, uh, my stone back on top, I don't want you to be able to see any wood peeking through. So I'm just gonna hit this lip. Would the texture um, interfere with the transfer? No, no, you guys. Um, do I have anything out here as an example? Transfers take to texture beautifully. Uh, they take to texture beautifully, especially these transfers. Um, so I'm going to have, a, I'll have a sample tomorrow that you'll be able to see a transfer over a textured surface. But all it does is the transfer kind of conforms into the texture. You make sure you burnish it down really well. It is, um, Tracy from Tracy's Fancy did a post where she wrapped one of these transfers around curves and corners. And, um, and I'm going to do that tomorrow too when I put this on. Uh, these are near impossible to get to tear. If you want to wrap a transfer around a curve, that's one of the reasons we chose these is because they are near impossible to tear that transfer on a curve. So kind of same thing. Can you, now on this side, you can start seeing all this texture I've got in here. Do you guys see this cracking? Like that's cool, okay? Uh, here's my other choice. I could have filled all this with Dixie Mud. I could have floated it with Dixie Mud. I could have sanded it smooth and gotten rid of all this, but it's really cool cracking in there. Sorry, Sheila. Yes, I am using tripods. It's uh, quite the experience with a small piece like this. So sorry for any uh, vision better? problems. Is it better if I go up like that? Does that help you? That'll work. Um, if you stay up there painting there. Yeah, let me, yeah. Let me I'm going to lean it then so it doesn't tip. So I don't want to hold it. Okay. Um, you guys, when it's on live video, getting tight camera angles like that is near impossible. Number one on Facebook, Facebook dumps down the video quality so much. Uh, the video quality is better over on Instagram, but it has a tighter picture too. So um, Facebook dumps down, dumps down the video quality. And then when you move the camera around, it just starts getting blurry. So, you know, on my YouTube videos, I record YouTube videos in 4k video, which 8K is movie theater quality. My phone will record in 8K, but it's a huge file. Let's face it, we're painting furniture. I'm not winning winning Oscars. Easy there, Spielberg. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so the qu quality for what I do over on YouTube is, is much better than what you're going to get on a Facebook Live video. It's just never going to be the same when it has to be carried by a Wi-Fi signal. Isn't it fun how technology forces you to be like somewhat savvy? You've got to figure this stuff out. We were having a whole conversation, just the Brandon Baxter team the other day about, you know, um, about photo quality. You need to keep your photos in such high quality, but then the files get huge. And if you dumb them down, they start getting blurry. Um, if you keep them large, you've got to store them and they're huge. <clears throat> Like I just blew through two external hard drives saving photos the other day. That's nuts. The struggle is real. This is driftwood. I'm going heavy on the driftwood. I think I like the driftwood the most. I'm actually probably going to end up with a little bit of even my 
boss peeking through underneath this gray. It's right, it's right in line with the colors that I'm using, which are French linen, um, driftwood, and then dried sage. You can tell when I put the dried sage on, watch the dried sage. It's much, much warmer. That's where I start getting these really warm spots. I want to show how much you're putting on the brush. Oh, barely anything. Okay, so if I, I'm just going to dip my brush in. Okay, here's an example. This side looks heavy because it's not hitting my piece. Look at the tips. Like oh, there's really barely any paint on there. What's that? I was guiding you. Oh. Okay, the uh, back side of my brush has more paint on it. I can lay it off, but I'm not using that side as much. See how heavy that back side was? It doesn't really matter though, because honestly, this is kind of a messy finish. Messy? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's another point. <laughs> I know. Um, the train has left the station. <laughs> yeah, messy finishes are seriously so freeing. You want to know what the hardest finishes to get right are? Clean, crisp, pure, no decoration on them whatsoever. Hardest finishes because there is no room for any errors. You do messy finishes like this, I'm telling you, you can't get it wrong. You distress, you texturize, you all these things. And it's so freeing because you don't have to worry about oh, my brush strokes and oh, Oh, did I fix, do my repair right? And, oh, there's a crack in my wood and all this stuff that you would normally worry about. Uh-uh. I'm like loving every minute right here. Messy finishes are super freeing. If messy, you're... messy, messy. And I say messy. It doesn't mean it's <clears> going <throat> to be sloppy. You know, this is still going to be a nice looking piece of furniture when I'm done. Let me get this leg under here. Um, it's still going to be very pretty, but like, no, I'm not fixing all this stuff. It's really a cute little piece on its own, and it wouldn't suit the style of the piece. And no water. No, I'm not using any water. One brush. No water, one brush tonight. Kind of easy. And it'll you'll see how it comes together tomorrow when I put that transfer on is really where it's going to start making sense. Let me show you what I plan to do with some of this. Um, this is my collard greens. So I'm gonna darken up some of these edges, but just kind of down low, I think. Whoops, that I'm gonna have well, to fix. Well, how about that? Yeah, I'm gonna peel this off. That doesn't look That's, like a peeling it's, stick. It's the veneer. Oh, I'll just tape that on yeah. later. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm gonna have to see that and fill that. <laughs> so what I kind of want to do is I want to bring a little bit of this uh, this is um, collard greens, and I'm just gonna kind of darken it around some of my edges. It's going to blend in with my finish ultimately though. I think just around the bottom, kind of coming up the sides. It's just gonna be a little bit of shading with paint. I'm gonna let it fade out as we go up. Ooh, there's an episode. Shading with paint. Yeah, that's, I, I do a, a lot of shading with paint. That's what, you know, blending is shading with paint. Did and you then, say something? So I'll put a little bit of that collard greens on there. I'm not going to worry about that spot right now because I need to. And then as I come back and I work in my transfer tomorrow is when I'm going to really work this paint in. But I'm going to let that collard greens get a little bit dark and then you'll be able to see kind of the direction it's gonna go with a little bit of darkness down there at the bottom where it's a little more grungy looking and this will have distressing <laughs> on it. Thanks, Nita. <laughs> just duct tape. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's all I need, huh? No, it's that's a super ah. easy repair. It's a super thin veneer. Let me show you guys. It's really easy. It's, um, look at how thin this veneer is. It's ridiculous. Like how this. thin is it? It's, this is thinner than most veneers are. It's not even a fingernail. I'm going to put a little bit of Dixie Mud on here just to smooth it out. And then I'm just going to sand it smooth and paint right over the top of it. Bam, bam. That's all I'm going to do. And you will never even know that that was there. It was a loose piece of veneer. My brush caught it and it... I'll know. Well, yeah, but are you going to... Is this piece going to stay with you? I don't know. I haven't decided so yet. I actually kind of like... I just took the collard greens up a little bit higher. And I like how a really faint bit of the collard greens, that little bit of darkness just picks up some of the little ridges and wood texture. It's got heavy wood grain texture in there. 
So it'll be heavier down here at the bottom. And then the other place I'm gonna put my collard greens is inside this frame here. That's how I'm gonna shade this frame. Now I'm gonna do this with the transfer on there though. Because all it's gonna be hidden when I put the transfer on. But that's kind of my idea. Is I will then take a little bit of my collard greens. I have not refilled the brush, you guys. It's just the faint amount of paint that's on here. Still working with just one brush. The same brush I put all my other colors on. And just that little tiny bit of dark paint. And I can come around these edges. And I don't care if it stays just inside the frame. It can come outside a little bit. Just that faint amount of paint creates a subtle shading. So once my transfer is on there tomorrow, but that gives me a nice base. So tomorrow we can come back, I can put this on, and then I'm gonna work in around the edges to make them disappear, because it's not gonna fit the full size of this door. I'm gonna have a gap. I'll probably cut out this little scrolly right here, and I'm gonna have a gap at the bottom. You're not even gonna notice it. You will not know where that is. Okay, so can you kind of see how we pulled out the colors that are in that background? I feel like those three, the French linen, driftwood, and dried sage are pretty good match to what I've got going on there. All right, you guys, I'm going to pack it up tonight. What? Yeah, it is time. <sighs> um, yeah, so you guys, all day long on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook page tomorrow, Tune in, and you guys are going to have brand ambassadors all day long with... Drum roll. All of the new Dixie Bell transfers. Some of mine might be missing their tops because I um, took Hello. pictures. All the Dixie Bell transfers, you guys. So we're going to use a variety of these tomorrow. I'll have two on my live, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, questions on dates for these. These will be, be available beginning March 17th through your Dixie Bell Elite retailers, and they will follow up and be uh, available online a couple weeks after that. Okay, so that's the plan. March 17th is the soonest that those will be available, and they're going to start out with Elite retailers. Um you guys <laughs> Tammy I'm calling it sick <laughs> yeah, I'm telling, it's gonna be a fun day we're just gonna do transfers all day long all the new designs all the brand ambassadors all transfers all day long all right so I'm gonna I'm finish getting this piece ready but I hope you guys will come back and hang out with me tomorrow night same time 9 p.m. Eastern my link is above in the post if you want to check out any of the colors that we used tonight which was French linen driftwood and dried sage um, or the new Dixie Bell fan deck. If you want to pull out colors from your transfers, it's a huge help. Um, otherwise, you guys have a great evening and a great weekend. I'll see you guys later.